Well, perhaps I could begin with uh, have a, a comment in the question. Uh, first of all, my comment is there are some people who are doing something uh, about the School of the Americas, which is a major training center at Fort Benning, Georgia, for officers, uh, military people in Latin America. And um, beginning on this coming March 24th, there's going to be a fast, the beginning of a seven-day fast and lobby to close the School of the Americas, which has been renamed the School of Assassins uh, by the people who are organizing this campaign. March 24th, the beginning of this fast and lobby is the 15th anniversary of the murder of Archbishop Romero in El Salvador by uh, graduates of the School of the Americas. And in case people are wondering whether this is at all relevant to Colombia, in the uh, most recent newsletter from the people who are putting together this campaign, it mentions that in Colombia, over 100 of the 246 officers cited for war crimes by an international human rights tribunal in 1993 uh, were graduates of the School of the Americas. Uh, our own Congressman Joe Kennedy has introduced legislation to close the School of the Americas and it has won some support that the, I believe the past two years has uh, it's been introduced and there's growing support for this. And I just want to uh, let people know that this is, this is happening uh, beginning March 24th. I'll put the uh, address and the telephone number for anyone who's interested up on the blackboard. Um, my question is specifically, uh, my understanding is that the, organi the groups, the rural organizations in opposition uh, in, in Colombia uh, merged into an above ground, uh, quote unquote, legitimate political party called the Patriotic Union, if I'm not mistaken. And I think that was the party that Noam was referring to when he said several thousand members of this uh, now supposedly legitimate political party have been murdered in the past couple of years. I wonder if you could talk about, either of you, both of you could, could speak about uh, this, what has happened with the, the guerrilla movements coming together, coming out into the open, and now being uh, subject to a campaign of, uh, of assassination. OK, uh, first of all, the Union Patriotica, it is true that a lot of the members were people that came out uh, after the deals and the negotiations with the government to become a political party. But it's also true that a lot of the members weren't. Uh, they were just people who weren't school teachers, I mean university teachers or union leaders or community leaders. Uh, what I've seen is that definitely the guerrilla members of the different guerrilla groups came out of uh, ideology, ideology background in the 1940s after Gaetan was killed in 1948 on April 9th, uh, and it was the true from the most of the guerrilla groups at that time. What I've seen in the last 10 years is that they have no any more political ground. They have no more ideological ground in their work. Uh, most of them have become just uh, criminals, common criminals doing a lot of crimes even against the, the communities. Uh, we've seen a lot of kidnappings just uh, for any political reason, but just for getting money. I mean, it's different if you see, like, the, when they did the, get into the embassy of Dominican Republic in the 1980s, and there were all these ambassadors. That was definitely a political move. But then you have seen a lot of crimes, like the one that I told in La Chinita, in Apartado. We have nothing to do with political uh, issues. And that sometimes they repeating the same thing of non-tolerance. Uh, against the other group, and yet you see the civilians who are caught up in the middle of this war.
Well, in Colombia, with this uh, public court order, uh, public court judges and non faced judges and uh, secret evidence, we've seen a lot of, of people that it's very easy because all these trials to accuse somebody of being terrorist or being narco trafficker. So we've seen a lot of union leaders who are being accused of being terrorists and put in jail without being really able to defend themselves because this is all this secret evidence. Just uh, an example that was in a strike into the communication system. The union went to a strike and they got out of the country without uh, telephone for a few weeks. And just uh, a few months after the strike, a lot of the leaders from that strike were put in jail, accused of being terrorists, and as I say, without uh, being any possibility of defense themselves. Uh, these, all these courts, uh, non, non faces judges and all that, is being used more often and often to persecute uh, political, pro, uh, uh, just political people, people who try to, to become a third party or people who wants to be in opposition. When they can't do that through trials, they do just kill them as they did with the Union Patriotica. Um, well, it, let me begin by a comment about Colombia. I, I said, and this is really wrong, that there were two parties in Colombia and then there was one independent party. Actually, there's one party in Colombia, which one of the ex-presidents called uh, two horses with the same owner. Uh, and the Patriotic Union Party was the first party in Colombia. And I think the same can be said here. There's one party, there aren't two parties, uh, and it's about time we had a second party. Uh, now, there are several initiatives that I think are important and hopeful. One is Labor Party advocates, another is New Party. I assume they'll get together sooner or later. They have pretty similar programs, sort of somewhat different, you know, kind of popular base. Uh, and the comments that I ended from quoting Cecilia are appropriate in spades here. I mean, the labor movement has always had what it called internationals but they were never international. Uh, it was hard enough to organize nationally. Uh, that's not easy. Capital is tyranny. What, what's called business is just totalitarian tyranny of uh, the most extreme form that humans have ever invented. And it has highly concentrated power. Uh, ordinary people don't have that. They've got to pool their limited resources to get into the game. Uh, that's why unions are so hated. Uh, because they're a democratizing force. They help ordinary people get together to get into the game altogether. So they have to be destroyed, therefore. Uh, the uh, Labor Party advocates is an attempt to develop a second party which would be based in par on working people. Working people means almost everybody, remember. Uh, the, uh, 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 and that's a really important initiative and it has got to be an international. I mean, there is just no way in an, in an increasingly globalized economy for working people to defend themselves at a national level. Uh, we see that all over the place. The whole point of things like NAFTA and GATT, one of their major, they're not free trade agreements. These are investor rights agreements designed to place even more power into the hands of private tyrannies. Uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 you can see it all the time. Right now, there's, a big, there's big strikes going on in Decatur, Illinois. Very important strikes. They may destroy the American labor movement. Uh, the Caterpillar Corporation and a couple others are trying to destroy the main functioning unions, UAW mainly. I think there'll be some meetings about that around here pretty soon. Uh, well, how can Caterpillar Corpor and Decatur, Illinois, which is a working class town, is mostly on strike. How can Caterpillar hope to win? Well, pretty easy, they tell you. Uh, they have built up enough excess production. Remember, produ uh, investment is not primarily for profit, it's for power. Uh, and so there's plenty of excess production developed in order to be able to use as a weapon of class warfare. So they've built up excess production in other countries, like say Brazil, uh, and they can produce from those countries uh, to try to undercut working people here in case they go on strike, and they say so. So the Gillette Corporation, for example, which happens to be based around here, uh, recently told the business press, told the business press that they are building up excess capacity, uh, even in countries with much higher wages and better conditions, like Germany. They're building up excess capacity in Germany, so in case workers in Boston get the funny idea of going on strike, 
they can supply the European and, in fact, the American market from excess productive capacity that they've developed in Germany. Now, you know, unless people across borders can begin to work together the way private tyranny does, they're not going to be able to fight this class war. And it's a vicious class war. There's no doubt about it. So that's going to require political organizations and other kinds of organizations. Uh, and it's not going to come out of the existing single party. Uh, so it's unless that party is radically changed by the existence of alternatives which force it to change. So I think this is a really important initiative. Okay, I'd like to um, thank you all for coming. Did you want to make a quick question? Okay. <laughs> no, is it true that there's a U.S. law that prevents the United States from providing aid to countries engaged in human rights abuses? Uh, oh, yeah. There's, uh, yeah, all of you, yeah. Go ahead. Pardon? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, uh, first, yes, there are laws on the books uh, which make it illegal to provide aid to uh, countries involved in systematic human rights abuses. Uh, this human rights policy is an extremely interesting one, and indeed it shows what young people can do. Uh, this is called the Carter Human Rights Policy, which is a total fraud. Uh, it was a more accurate statement would be that it's a congressional human rights policy, which was rammed down the throats of every executive, including Carter, who had a horrendous human rights policy himself. It was rammed down their throats. They were dragged kicking and screaming to force occasionally to follow it. That includes Clinton uh, by congressional legislation. And if you look back at the congressional legislation, that comes right out of the movements of the 60s popular move, the, which were mostly youth, young people. A number of those, a lot of those young people, including some of them who are by now quite high up in the human rights groups and working very effectively when you met in Washington, uh, got into one of the ways in which they decided to change things was to get into Congress and become legislative assistants. It's sort of an open secret that the only people who think in Congress are the young legislative assistants, mostly women. Uh, and they do the thinking and the research and do things, and then the congressmen talk. Uh, and uh, the, like, it's just like anchormen in the newsroom and that sort of thing. The, uh, uh, or a lot of scientific papers, if you look. But uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, they pushed through legislation, which finally made it through people like Tom Harkins and others, and it got into law, and it is law. Uh, it is a p against US law for uh, to provide assistance to any country that systematically tortures its citizens. Uh, Human Rights Watch uh, uh, regularly, when it describes torture, uh, adds a section saying the aid to this country is illegal under US law. The most recent one that they mentioned is the one that gets most of the aid, Israel, which they just put out a report describing what is not a big secret, that Israel systematically tortures people. Uh, and, uh, and pointed out, yeah, all U.S. aid to Israel is illegal. Uh, in fact, just about all U.S. aid is illegal, uh, which means everybody who's putting through that aid should be in jail. Uh, that's, uh, because that's a criminal act to, for, a, for, an, for a person in an executive position in the United States to carry out criminal acts. Uh, so it's all illegal. If the law meant anything, they'd all be in jail. Uh, so that's the answer to the first question. Uh, as for the, uh, incidentally, the same is true of this Omnibus Terrorism Act that's just being discussed now. If it becomes illegal, if, if they pass it, as they will, which makes it illegal to provide aid to any foreign entity uh, which is involved in terrorist activity, everyone in the U.S. Uh, in the White House is going right to jail, or would if there were any laws. Uh, because most of the aid that they provide goes to the Middle East country, which happens to be more engaged in terrorism than anybody else involved. Uh, it's the only country that carries out systematic bombing of defenseless civilian targets, rocketing, kidnapping, uh, just recently blockaded uh, the coast of Lebanon for a month to prevent fishermen from going out. Uh, that's terrorism, in fact, international terrorism, and they do it because we give them the money and the support for it and pay the costs and so on. So anybody who gives aid to the Jewish National Fund or, in fact, pays their taxes uh, is instantly uh, guilty under the Omnibus Terrorism Act. But again, though this is transparently obvious, you're going to wait a long time before you read it. 
uh, the, uh, we have a disciplined intellectual class who don't see things. You know, you have to be taught very hard in many years in places like Harvard and MIT so you don't see what's before your eyes. Uh, the, uh, uh, so yeah, it's all illegal, flatly illegal. Uh, furthermore, the most terrorism and, uh, uh, like I said, it's Washington that's the torture capital of the world if you trace it back. Uh, well, what about Jennifer Harbury? Jennifer Harbury is another personal friend. There's a woman who uh, is now on, on a hunger strike again. This is the second long hunger strike. Her husband uh, was a, uh, she's an American lawyer, in fact, whose husband was a Mayan uh, guerrilla in uh, Guatemala who was captured by the Guatemalan military, which is maybe the most brutal in the hemisphere. Apparently, Colombia has just surpassed them and taken first prize, but I don't know exactly who really wins. I might mention, incidentally, that the leading killer in Guatemala, uh, uh, General Gramajo, who was responsible for not just things like the Trujillo massacre, but for killing tens of thousands of people in the highlands, uh, he was shipped off to Harvard two or three years ago to improve his skills uh, because the State Department was planning to have him be their next president. He was their kind of like white-haired boy or whatever you call it. Uh, the uh, local activists around here, here's some other things you can do, discovered that he was here. Uh, Harvard denied it, but it was true. Uh, and uh, Alan Nairn, who's the person who, a very good freelance journalist, who was the guy who exposed the source of the death squads back in the Kennedy planning, in fact. Uh, Alan Nairn, working with the Center for Constitutional Rights, Alan has quite a flair, uh, managed to uh, serve General Gramajo with a subpoena uh, at the moment of the Harvard graduation while all the television cameras were focused on him and he was just getting his diploma, Alan ran up there with a subpoena prepared by the Center for Constitutional Rights accusing him of human rights violations. There is a U.S. law which makes it possible to sue foreign, foreigners resident here for atrocities carried out in the home country. Uh, he, of course, fled the country right away. Uh, and the case was settled. He was sentenced in absentia to $10 million. Same thing was repeated the next year for an Indonesian general. Uh, so there are plenty of things you can do to make the country less hospital to, to, hospitable to mass murderers and killers, uh, though unfortunately the ones in Washington remain immune for the moment. Uh, Jennifer Harbury is on strike. Uh, her husband was captured, uh, allegedly killed, so the Guatemalan military claim, but she by now has plenty of evidence from people who were in jail with him that he wasn't killed, he's being tortured, held and tortured somewhere. Uh, and she's been on fasting a, a couple of weeks ago, she had a month long fast in Guatemala City, which takes a lot of guts, I should say, uh, to uh, protest this. And uh, there was some move on the part of the State Department and, some, and the Guatemalan government saying they were going to do something about it, but of course they didn't, so she started her fast up again. And with enough support, and it's always the same question, if there's enough popular support, there may be an effect, not just for her husband, but uh, for plenty of others who were in a similar situation. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all you stayed and uh, thank our two speakers, Juan Pablo Ordonez and Noam Chomsky. Thanks a lot. Well, perhaps I could begin with uh, have a, a comment in the question. Uh, first of all, my comment is there are some people who are doing something uh, about the School of the Americas, which is a major training center at Fort Benning, Georgia, for officers, uh, military people in Latin America. And um, beginning on this coming March 24th, there's going to be a fast, the beginning of a seven-day fast and lobby to close the School of the Americas, which has been renamed the School of Assassins. Uh, introduced legislation to close the School of the Americas and it has won some support that the, I believe the past two years is, uh, it's been introduced and there's growing support for this and I just want to uh, let people know that this is, this is happening uh, beginning March 24th. I'll put the uh, address and the telephone number for anyone who's interested on the blackboard. Um, my question is specifically, about, my understanding is that the Organ the groups, the guerrilla organizations in opposition uh, in, in Colombia uh, merged into an above ground, uh, quote unquote, legitimate political party called the Patriotic Union, if I'm not mistaken. 
by the people who are organizing this campaign. March 24th, the beginning of this fast and lobby, is the 15th anniversary of the murder of Archbishop Romero in El Salvador by uh, graduates of the School of the Americas. And in case people are wondering whether this is at all relevant to Colombia, in the uh, most recent newsletter from the people who are putting together this campaign, it mentions that in Colombia, over 100 of the 246 officers cited for war crimes by an international human rights tribunal in 1993 uh, were graduates of the School of the Americas. Uh, our own Congressman Joe Kennedy has said that a lot of their members weren't. Uh, they were just people who were in school teachers, I mean university teachers or union leaders or community leaders. Uh, what I've seen is that definitely the guerrilla members of the different guerrilla groups came out of uh, ideology, ideology background in the 1940s after Gaetan was killed in 1948 on April 9th. Uh, and it was the true from the most of the guerrilla groups at that time. What I've seen in the last 10 years is that they have no any more political ground. They have no more ideological ground in their work. Uh, most of them have become just uh, criminals, common criminals, doing a lot of crimes, even against. And I think that was the party that no one was referring to when he said several thousand members of this uh, now supposedly legitimate political party have been murdered in the past couple of years. I wonder if you could talk about, either of you, both of you could, could speak about uh, this, what has happened with the, the guerrilla movements coming together, coming out into the open, and now being uh, subject to a campaign of, uh, of assassination. Okay, uh, first of all, the Union Patriotica, it is true that a lot of the members were people that came out uh, after the deals and the negotiations with the government to become a political party, but it's also true.